Now, let's get started with a review of normal hematopoietic processes. Blood cells differentiate from pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. In the first step, they differentiate into proerythroblasts, myeloblasts, monoblasts, megakaryoblasts, and lymphoblasts. Proerythroblasts develop into reticulocytes, which develop into erythrocytes. Myeloblasts differentiate into neutrophils, isonophils, and basophils with several stages of development. Promyelocytes to myelocytes to metamyelocytes to stab cells. Monoblasts develop into monocytes. Megakaryoblasts develop into megakaryocytes, which develop into platelets. Lymphoblasts develop into T cells and B cells, which can further develop into plasma cells. The abundance of the different white blood cells from most to least is neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, isonophils, and basophils. This can be remembered with the mnemonic, neutrophils like making everything better. Erythrocytes are anucleate and biconcave. They have a large surface area to volume ratio, which facilitates gas exchange. Their energy source is glucose. Of that, 90% is anaerobically degraded to lactate and 10% by HMP shunt. Erythrocytes survive, on average, for 120 days. The membranes of erythrocytes are rich in the anion exchanger 1, or band 3, protein, which exchanges chloride for bicarbonate. When blood moves through the lungs, the CO2 levels fall, and bicarbonate is formed during CO2 conversion inside the cells, and then it moves out. A few terms to remember are erythrocytosis is the same as polycythemia and means that the number of red blood cells increases. Anisocytosis means the cells are of different size Poikilocytosis means they are of varying shapes, and reticulocyte is the term for immature erythrocytes. There are two types of leukocytes, namely the granulocytes and mononuclear cells. Typically, there are between four to 10,000 leukocytes per microliter of blood. The granulocytes include basophils, which mediate allergic reactions, are the least common granulocyte, and their granules contain heparin, histamine, and leukotrienes. Isonophils, which defend against helminthic and protozoan infections, are highly phagocytic for antigen-antibody complexes, and produce histaminase and aryl sulfatase. Granulocytes also include neutrophils, which are acute inflammatory response cells that are phagocytic, and their granules contain hydrolytic enzymes such as lysozyme, myeloperoxidase, and lactoferrin. The mononuclear cells include monocytes, which are large cells with a kidney-shaped nucleus and a cytoplasm with a frosted glass appearance. When present in tissue, monocytes differentiate into macrophages. Also, mononuclear cells include lymphocytes, which will be discussed in greater detail later. Mast cells mediate allergic responses, 
and play a role in wound healing and defense against pathogens. Upon degranulation, they release histamine, heparin, and isonophil chemotactic factors. They express a receptor for IgE and are consequently coated with IgE. From a structural and functional point of view, mast cells resemble basophils, but they are not the same cell type. Mast cells reside within tissue. Macrophages are produced from the differentiation of monocytes. They are phagocytes, engulfing and digesting bacteria and cell debris. After digesting a pathogen, they present antigens by attaching them to MHC2. One of their important functions is the removal of necrotic cellular debris in tissues, particularly the lungs. They are large, long-lived cells. The primary function of dendritic cells is to act as antigen-presenting cells. Both MHC2 and FC receptor are found on their surface. They act as messengers between adaptive and innate immune responses and are found in small quantities in tissue in contact with the external environment, such as the skin, nose, lungs, and stomach. When found in the skin, they are called Langerhans cells. Lymphocytes are round cells with a dark staining nucleus and polyribosomes large enough to be seen under a light microscope. Natural killer cells are large granular lymphocytes and T and B cells are small lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, also called B cells, are an important part of the humoral and the adaptive immune response. They produce antibodies against antigens and are antigen-presenting cells that may further develop into memory B cells or plasma B cells. They mature in the bone marrow and migrate to the peripheral lymphoid tissue. Plasma cells are sometimes referred to as antibody-producing factories. They are B cells that, having been exposed to antigen, produce large amounts of antibodies which bind to microbes, making them targets for phagocytosis and activation of the complement system. The cells have an off-center nucleus, clock face chromatin distribution, abundant rough ER, and well-developed Golgi apparatus. Multiple myeloma is a plasma cell neoplasm. T-cells play a central role in cell-mediated immunity. They can be distinguished from the other lymphocytes by the presence of T-cell receptors on their surface, and they further differentiate into helper T-cells that express MHC2, CD4, and cytotoxic cells that express MHC1 and CD8, and suppressor T-cells. T cells represent 80% of the circulating lymphocytes. They are formed from stem cells in the bone marrow and mature in the thymus. Now let's take a look at the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade is a series of reactions where the completion of one step catalyzes the next step. The coagulation factors are usually serine proteases, but there are some exceptions. There are two different starting points, the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. In the extrinsic pathway, following damage to a blood vessel, factor 7 comes into contact with tissue factor, forming an activated complex of TF, 
factor 7a, which activates factor 9 and 10. At this point, the pathway joins the common pathway, which will be described in a moment. In the intrinsic pathway, the starting point is the formation of the primary complex on collagen by high molecular weight kininogen, precalicrine, and factor 12. Factor 12 is also known as Hageman factor. Precalicrine is converted to calicrine when factor 12 is activated. Factor 12A activates factor 11, which in turn activates factor 9. Factor 9 plus its cofactor 8A form the tenase complex, which activates factor 10. At this point, the two pathways merge to a common pathway. Factor 10A and its cofactor 5A form the prothrombinase complex, which activates prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin and activates factor 13, which crosslinks the fibrin to form a clot. Protein C is a major anticoagulant. It is a vitamin K-dependent serine protease enzyme. The activated form of protein C, along with protein S as a cofactor, degrades factors 5A and 8A. When the factor 5 Leiden variant is present, protein C cannot inactivate factor 5. Antithrombin is a serine protease inhibitor. It degrades the serine proteases, which include thrombin, factor 9A, factor 10A, factor 11A, and factor 12A. Its adhesion to these factors is increased when heparin is present. Fibrinolysis occurs when TPA catalyzes the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, the enzyme that breaks down clots. On a clinical note, PT, the prothrombin time, measures factors 2, 5, 7, 10, and fibrinogen. PTT, the partial prothromboplastin time, measures all factors except 7. Now let's take a look at the convergence of coagulation, complement, and the kinin pathways. The coagulation pathway and the kinin pathways converge with HMWK and factor 12. HMWK functions as a cofactor for the activation of factor 12. Factor 12, in turn, activates precalicrine to produce calicrine. From there, the kinin pathway proceeds as follows. Calicrine releases bradykinin from HMWK. Bradykinin has a number of effects. It increases vasodilation, permeability, and pain. It can be inhibited by ACE, the angiotensin converting enzyme. The kinin pathway and fibrinolytic system converge with calicrine, which in addition to releasing bradykinin from HMWK, also generates plasmin from plasminogen. Plasmin degrades fibrin clots and interacts with the complement cascade by activating some mediators of the complement system. The formation of a platelet plug is a temporary repair. There are three steps. First, if von Willebrand factor is present, platelets will adhere to exposed basement membranes. Second, to stimulate aggregation of the platelets, they release thromboxane A2 to prevent the aggregation of platelets, and the endothelial cells release PGI2 and nitric oxide. Third, there is swelling, and ADP and calcium are released to strengthen the plug, 
leading to fibrin deposition. Finally, let's take a look at blood groups. The four major blood groups are A, which has the A antigen on the surface of red blood cells and the B antibody in plasma, B, which has the B antigen on the surface of red blood cells and the A antibody in plasma, AB, which has both A and B antigens on the surface of red blood cells and no antibodies in the plasma, and O, which has neither A nor B antigens on the surface of red blood cells, but both A and B antibodies in the plasma. People with the AB blood group are known as universal recipients, and people with the O blood group are known as universal donors. Another protein that plays an important role in blood grouping is the Rh factor. If present, the cells are said to be positive, and if absent, they are negative. 